Hey guys, Stinky Cash here again. And today I want to talk about that infamous story we were all told in school of Galileo versus the church. Remember that one? Galileo versus the church. Science versus religion. Logic versus faith. This is how the story is always presented. This story is always told in a way that makes the church look like dumb and old-fashioned science deniers who are too stubborn and set in their ways to change their beliefs, despite the new so-called undeniable scientific evidence that was being presented to them. So this story makes the church seem like the bully and makes Galileo out to be the innocent victim. You know what I mean? A man of science and reason sentenced to life under house arrest all because he challenged the old idiotic ways of the Catholic Church. And because the world today, in 2016, accepts heliocentrism as fact, this is how the story is always presented. Okay, But it's a classic Hegelian dialectic. You have to begin by understanding that in no way does the Roman Catholic Church represent God, Jesus, the Bible, or the truth. The Roman Catholic Church is a form of controlled opposition. You see, after Jesus died, his teachings of truth spread through the population at a rate that could not be contained by the Roman Empire. So for 300 years, Rome did everything they could to try and stop the spread of Christianity. Original true Christians were being hunted down and persecuted. Okay, But the spread of this truth was just too great. You can't stop truth from spreading. So in order to control their opposition, they became their opposition. On his deathbed, Constantine declared that Rome would convert to Christianity. But nothing they did was Christian at all. They hijacked the concept of Christianity, and they perverted the teachings of Jesus beyond any recognition. All they did was take their same old pagan traditions and holidays, rebrand them, and then say, voila, we're Christians now. Okay? It's all controlled opposition. This is the best way to control your opposition, is to lead them, is to become them. And that is what Rome did. And that is how they deceived the followers of Christ. It only took a few generations for the entire world to be deceived. Okay, It only took a few generations for the entire world to forget. See, we all know Jesus wasn't born on December 25th and that the resurrection has nothing to do with Easter. These are pagan traditions. These are pagan holidays. And we are all taught that Rome infused these pagan traditions into Christianity as a way to make it easier for the pagan population to convert to the new religion. But the truth is the exact opposite. It was the people, the average people of the population who were converting to Christianity, and it was the people in power who wanted to remain pagan sun worshippers. So in order to stay in power, they had to rebrand themselves as Christian. In order to control their population, they had to become them. They had to become their opposition. And because of that opposition, the Roman Catholic Church was born. But they remained the same old sun worshippers they always were. They just personified the sun into this false version of Jesus that you know and love today. This white Jesus. Okay, They are all sun worshippers. And because of this, it had been a long-standing goal for them to get the world to accept that the sun is at the center of the universe and that everything revolves around it. This was their goal. They want to be in possession of the truth so that they can control it and discredit it whenever they want and get people to turn away from it. They want to discredit the Bible even though they claim to be the people who stand for it. Everything they do contradicts the Bible and that's because that's Satan's sense of humor. He loves to work in opposites. General Joshua commanded the sun to stop moving to give him more daylight to defeat his enemies. And the Jesuit general Galileo ordered the earth to start moving in order to discredit the Bible. Okay? Now it was Nicholas Copernicus, a Jesuit priest, who pushed the idea of heliocentrism. And it was Galileo, a devout Catholic. And if you ask me, based on my research, he was also a Jesuit monk. It was him pushing the concepts of Nicholas Copernicus. Now before Galileo was even born, Heliocentrism was widely accepted in the Jesuit scientific community. However, it was hard for many of the common folk to accept this idea of heliocentrism because of the lack of an observed stellar parallax. The Catholic Church had already been using the Julian calendar, which was a solar calendar created by Julius Caesar in 45 BC. And in 1582, Pope Gregory XIII introduced the Gregorian calendar, 
which is also a solar calendar. And the main reason why they commissioned this new calendar was because the Julian calendar was 11 minutes off, which threw the calendar off with the vernal equinox and all the true seasons going on in the world. And because Easter was observed on March 21st, Pope Gregory wanted Easter to line up with the equinox. Because Easter, which allegedly celebrates the resurrection of Christ, has nothing to do with Christ. It is still all pagan sun worship. Easter is just another pagan feast day. It has nothing to do with Christ. Now the principal scholar behind the Gregorian calendar and one of the world's leading astronomers was a man named Christoph Clavius, who was also a Jesuit. So these sun-worshipping Jesuits had been accepting the solar calendar and heliocentrism long before Galileo even said his first word. So to convince the people of the world that heliocentrism was really true, they created a Hegelian dialectic. Galileo versus the church. Science versus religion. Geocentrism versus heliocentrism. Both sides playing against each other to accomplish the same common goal. The church was never defending geocentricity. They wanted heliocentrism. They wanted the sun in the center. And they always have. Their biggest obstacle is that the Bible does not support heliocentrism. So they actually had to try to discredit the Bible by discrediting themselves. Because they're the ones who pretend to stand for the Bible. It's all a way to control people. The Catholic Church can be used to control people who would be following Christ. And this false science, which is actually a religion, can be used to control all the people who reject Christ. The trial and condemnation of Galileo was just a big charade. Okay, The world hates a bully, and the church played bully, and they did it really well. So after the trial, everybody went out and they bought Galileo's book. And this made the population trust Galileo even more. The same exact thing would happen in today's society. Even though Galileo had absolutely nothing, his only so-called proof that the earth moved was the tides. He had absolutely nothing, it was all just a farce. The guy lived out his life in comfort and luxury under so-called house arrest, okay? This was all just a big show. This type of Hegelian dialectic manipulation has been used throughout history time and time again, and they are still using it on you today.